With this YouTube series, I want to showcase a nice testing recipe that can help writing integration tests for your Java applications that connect to a remote system via HTTP. So with this small overview here, I want to uh, demonstrate what we are about to test. So we have a Spring Boot application which exposes a public uh, HTTP endpoint to the outside. So in the production environment, users or client uh, request data from this API, which will which our Spring Boot backend then will process. And for this processing, our Spring Boot backend will reach out to another system. In this example here, it's a public dummy API called placeholder API. But in general, we could think uh, that our Spring Boot application for processing the request will reach out to any remote system, for example, a PayPal API or a weather or geolocation or Stripe API to do some work and fetch extra data. And when we now want to write integration tests for our Spring Boot application, so we now want to write on the bottom here a test and want to verify that our API slash to do's application is working as expected and also want to test different uh, scenarios. Uh, we shouldn't uh, reach out to the placeholder API for, for various reasons. So one big reason is that we create additional load on the remote service. And in case we have to pay for each uh, API invocation, we also uh, add a little bit more dollars to our uh, monthly bill. What it, what comes next is that we usually don't have full control of the response. So for our integration tests, we might also want to verify how our application behaves if one of the remote systems is returning, for example, 500 or is uh, returning quite slow. Also there, it's quite hard to achieve this when connecting to the real API for our test. And then furthermore, also with our integration test, when connecting to the real system, we would also rely on the uptime on this remote system and our tests might become flaky in case in the night or over the weekend, this remote API is having a hiccup and then we are uh, having test failures, uh, even though that's not our fault. So that's why for our integration tests, we can uh, use a mock HTTP server instead. So there are multiple mock servers for a Java project. One of the most used one is Wiremock, which will be used throughout this uh, YouTube series. There are also other projects like the mock server or the mock web server from OK HTTP. And for our test setup, we will then connect with, though this is now Spring Boot specific, but the learnings from the series also apply to testing other Java projects that use uh, other Java frameworks. So here we will then connect with the web test client. That's a nice testing utility of Spring where we can connect to our uh, started Spring Boot application and can verify it. And then in the background, um, won't connect to our placeholder API, but use Wiremock instead to then fake or have full control of the HTTP responses and can test various scenarios. What we will start with is a small introduction to this uh, Spring Boot sample application. Then we will have a first uh, test success with Wiremock and in the next video we will uh, talk about Wiremock's features in more detail and then also two more videos will come that will tackle test setup that is required for JUnit 4 and JUnit 5. So let's get started uh, with the sample application. So as already mentioned, uh, the demo project for this uh, YouTube series uses Spring Boot, but in general the techniques you will learn apply to various other Java frameworks. So you can use it also when writing tests for Quarkus, Micronaut or Jakarta EE application. And here our Spring Boot application is quite simple. So we have this one API to do's uh, HTTP endpoint. And what this internally does is it uses the web client. So the uh, HTTP client of the Spring framework. We could have also used the REST template here, but for this one, we are using the web client. And then what we are going to do, we are injecting a to do web client to our controller. So here, bear with me, that's not the most perfect application design. It's just a, a quick prototype and the web client we configure with an additional config class. So here we first inject the web client builder, which is 
populated by Spring Boot in the background and, and for example also instrumented to track some metrics for our HTTP calls. And then this becomes uh, quite important when we want to test our application. We configure the base URL for this HTTP client from outside. So here we are injecting a value from our application YAML. And inside here we see this is this placeholder API, which is literally just a dummy API and always responding the same responses. So that's how the client configuration works. We also add some default headers that we accept a JSON. And with this web client, we will then actually access the to-dos endpoint. So we are currently only delegating the call to a remote API, but you could think of we are connecting to multiple other remote systems to further process the request and then basically uh, serialize the JSON that comes to the Jackson array node. So then our endpoint returns a basic um, JSON array with a lot of to-dos. So to see this in action, let's start the application once. I forgot to mention the dependencies. So what we are going to use is Java 11 and a recent Spring Boot version. I will talk about the Wiremock imports later on. So the application is now up and running. What we can do now, we can use IntelliJ's internal HTTP client, for example, and now request the data from our started application. So here to do this. So we will see here 500. So that's unfortunate if we take a close look into our logs. So something is happening. And in this example, oh, the JSON placeholder API returns HTTP status code 520. So that's unfortunate for recording this series. So I guess they're currently having a small hiccup. Oh, so it seems, but now it's working. So what we what I was expecting or what our application uh, will return, you have to trust me here, is a list of to-dos which are which we are getting from this endpoint. So we are just passing them along to our client. And as you see here, so also the API which I'm currently using has some problems. So that's uh, not a problem for us, but you should have seen the small responsibility our application has. So we have one endpoint which then connects to another system where we fetch some data and then return this data. And we now want to write an integration test. So actually this downtime here is now quite a good example because if we would have used the actual endpoint for our integration tests and now this remote system has an hiccup or an internal problem, we would be blocked inside our CI pipeline because our tests would fail because the remote system is not available. So it's the perfect transition to Wiremock. And let's take a look what it takes to include Wiremock to our project. So if we open our POM XML, what I've included besides the Spring Boot Starter Web and Web Flux is this dependency here from Wiremock. So as we are above JRE8, we can use this JRE8 artifact here and then put it inside the test scope. So we won't bundle this jar file for our production application. And that's all it takes to include Wiremock to our project. And we can now start to write our first test and make use of Wiremock to mock the HTTP responses. So I will start with a manual test. So here let's call it manual setup IT. What I'm now going to do, this is specific to Spring Boot. So we'll annotate the test with at Spring Boot test. So this will ensure to start the entire Spring test context. And with the web environment of random port, we will also start not random access, but random port, we will also ensure to start the embedded servlet container, which is Tomcat in our example. So then we can access our application via HTTP and therefore Spring Boot auto configures the web test client for us. So don't get confused with, with the web client we used inside our application. This web test client is now a testing utility to connect to our started 
Spring Boot application during our integration test. To now start Wiremock, we are using uh, the lifecycle methods for now of JUnit Jupyter. So the specific JUnit 4 and 5 video will follow, but with this first introduction, I will do a quick and dirty setup here. So we will use the before all. There we can statically do some setup. So here we can say start Wiremock. And now we will store an instance of the Wiremock server inside our test class here. So there we will use now Wiremock server, Wiremock server. And inside this before all, so this will be executed before any of our tests will be executed because this will become quite important because in our example, we have to overwrite the base URL for the HTTP client while our spring context starts because if we do it afterwards the value has already been populated here and our client is configured so then it's too late. So in this specific example of spring boot we have to do it alongside the bootstrapping phase of our test context. We will see in a second how this works. And to now start a Wiremock instance, it's quite simple. Instantiate the Wiremock server. And as part of the constructor, we can pass the configuration. And we will use a default configuration and just say we want a dynamic port. So this way, Wiremock will start on a random ephemeral port and each server instance will start on a different, so there won't be any clashes. And with this setup here, we will reuse the Wiremock server at least for this entire integration test. And creating the instance is the first part. What's next is to say start. And as we are starting it, we also want to stop it. So we could also let the DJVM uh, kill everything, but let's do it the clean way and say stop Wiremock. So after all our tests have been executed, we can then stop Wiremock and with this simple setup we can have a first test that ensures everything is up and running. So here let's say test Wiremock and let's also print out so that we can see it's really a random port each time. Let's print it out here and then run our test. So Wiremock internally will start a local jetty server. It's quite fast so we shouldn't see any big performance downside for our test, but nevertheless we can improve the performance a little bit when reusing Wiremock for at least a test class, or which we will also see later on for an entire spring test context. So you now see here the test execution was quite fast, it took about 200 milliseconds, and if we take a close look into the debug logs of our test, we will also see here some jetty logs. So here, in case something w went wrong, we can also further investigate the startup of Wiremock for our test. And then if we scroll further down, we will then see here the nice Spring Boot banner. So first, the lifecycle method here kicks in to start Wiremock, then our Spring Boot context will start, and then at the end, our test here will fire so there's not nothing much to test here but at least you will now see here this is now the url on which we can access our local wiremock instance and also our assertion here became true so wiremock is up and running and we can now use it to mock our http responses so let's maybe execute a test once more to see here the url always changes the port is always different and for each new instance, a new port will be picked, which is free. So now we have to instruct Wiremock to return a HTTP response whenever our client will reach out to Wiremock and ask for the to-dos, which would be the placeholder API in production. But for our test, it's Wiremock. So therefore, let's add a new test. So let's say basic Wiremock example here. And then for the stubbing part, we can use the Wiremock server instance here and can say stub for. If you prefer a more BDD style test, you can also use the given that. 
it's internally doing the same but with a slightly different uh, method name we will go for stub4 and within stub4 we now have to define our HTTP stubbing so we have to tell Wiremock how to respond for this particular test case so therefore we use a Wiremock here and say it will be an HTTP GET so we know it will be the to-dos endpoints so this is the endpoint of the placeholder URL our web client will connect to this is this here once we configure here the URL and the HTTP method we can say what will happen so in our example we will say we will return a response this we can statically import from Wiremock and as part of this uh, builder here we can say with header so the first header is we will now fake the remote system and say we are going to return application JSON put in this in place and now we can uh, have full control of the body so here we can say with body and can now either pass a byte array a string or later on also uh, directly a JSON node or a body file let's go for a simple string here so if you would use or if you would have access to a Java version that has the text block feature already enabled we could do some nice inlining of uh, JSON payloads here unfortunately we are using Java 11 here so we don't have access to this cool feature so that's why let's do it quite simple let's just say we are returning here an empty array so for this test example the remote system will return no data but at least a successful HTTP response and to now access our API from our Spring Boot application we can use the web test client so this is also already configured to point to the local Tomcat so as this also starts on a random port we don't have to do any URL or port configuration Spring Boot auto configures this for us in the background and we can now say we want to access one of our endpoints and this is API slash to do's and then we can say exchange and what we are going to expect is, is that the status is okay so 200 and we can also expect already the body so in this example we can use JSON path and a, a simple JSON path expression to check for the length of the root element so as we're returning an array we are now expecting that this is equal to zero because we are returning here an empty array from the remote API and then let's run this test so here we will now see a test failure and this is what I've expected so you still see here our internal client inside our application still tries to connect to this real placeholder API and now we see the downside of connecting to the real API because now our test fails even though we have everything in control and the reason is we haven't already overwritten the base URL for the web client inside our application so that's still a to-do but I wanted to show you here the failing test case as we were expecting 200 but here we're returning 500 because the API is down even if it would be up and running it's quite hard for us to add some expectations for the body because we don't know how the application uh, the remote application uh, will return data what it will return and how much so that's why there is one final step we now have to override the base URL and in the particular case of Spring Boot Spring Boot offers here a nice test utility the add dynamic property source where we can add a static method to override some property values uh, of our application and they will be applied right before the whole application finally start here we get past the dynamic property registry and inside this registry we can now override any or we add basically any of our configuration values and for us we know it's the to-do base url if we would have multiple clients connecting to several systems we would have to override all of their base urls to now point to wiremock and then we can use the wiremock server and its method reference here to base url and this will then return 
the local host with the random ephemeral port for this particular Wiremock instance for our test. And then internally, our client won't connect to the real API, but instead now use Wiremock. So let's see if this fixes our test here. And we will now see here a green test case. So the test passed and we were able to test our Spring Boot application with an integration test while mocking the HTTP response of our dependent systems. With this test success, I want to finish the first video of this Wiremock series. In the next lesson, we will continue with uh, some more deep dive into Wiremock and we'll take a look at the several features of Wiremock that can help us uh, testing and stopping uh, HTTP responses from remote systems.